Archie squinted into the glare of the sun as he choked the neck of the bat. He pulled his helmet down to get what little shady the, vis the visor gave. With his bad luck, the ball would come straight out of the sun, which seemed to sit on the runty little pitcher's shoulder. His palms were wet with gritty against the smooth ash of the slugger, his scalp itchy and sweaty under the helmet. The pitcher was shorter than he was. All the pitchers were. His bad luck again. He was the biggest kid in the league. It was a weird kind of leverage for them. If they sank the ball enough, it would come in at the low edge of his strike zone. He thought about Luke in Star Wars wielding his Jedi lightsaber against a tiny sphere of light. He took a deep breath and waited. Behind him, the catcher tensed. Not yet, thought Archie, his grip tightening, and then he thought, now, and his arm drew back, and just a tiny sphere of light broke out, out of the sun. The ball met his bat with a glorious crack and spun away back into the glare. He stared after it even as the bat fell from his hand and he pushed off. The toes of his Converse All-Stars digging into the dirt. There was no following it. That baby was gone. He reached the first base, looking to make sure his foot touched it. But then he couldn't help looking up toward the, where the ball had disappeared as he ran all the way around the bases. He was running hard enough to make his chest tight and he could hear people t yelling to slow down. He could stroll if he wanted, but don't you do it that way. You, you always play ball out, all out. So he kept on running, tagging each base carefully and finally throwing himself down on cross home so no one could ever dispute that he owned it. Coach, who was kind of a goof, grabbed him and hugged him and pounded his back, screaming, you put that one over the moon. He screamed it three or four times as if nobody had heard them the first time. Archie didn't need the coach to tell him what he had done. He was Archie Smith, boy wonder, just like his mother said. There she was, jumping up and down and celebrating for him. He knew he was grinning too much and looked stupid, and so he tried not to, but he couldn't help it. So what if people laughed at him because they thought he looked funny? So what, his mom's always said. So what? When Archie wondered why she said it so often, in so many different ways, turning into a joke, She said she got it from Metallica, that metal band his dad used to like. Later that night, punching his, up his pillow, he replayed the homer in his head. If you could just hear the baseball game in the park two blocks west, the moon was full. They hardly needed the lights. There was something really cool and magic about the idea. Baseball by Moonlight. It was a grown-ups game. Guys from the bottling plant versus off-duty cops. Archie's mom had let him watch three innings, and then he had to go to come home and go to bed on account of he had summer school tomorrow. His bad luck. Special like kids. Him and a bunch of other dorks who had to go to school all year round because they were extra stupid. At least he could walk into school and didn't have to ride that short bus and wear a helmet all the time like a couple of the Eds. His mom said he he wasn't stupid, that he was in special ed because he was Dick Slexic. He knew the correct spelling now, but he always thought it, of it the way he first heard it. He had a desk calendar that had a big word on it to learn every day, but it was really cool, because, but he pretended he hated it. Just to fool his mom because she was tough to fool. He liked to watch the grown-ups play ball. They swore and yelled at each other, and then there was a yeasty smell of beer in the air. She, he wondered if the huge moon would ever sink into the pitcher's shoulder so that the ball would seem to come out of the moon. It was cool white, but not yellow like the sun. So maybe the ball would move slow and move smooth like cream when his mom was whipping it. Maybe it would be frosty cold to the touch, coming all the way from the moon to the, to the night of outer space without the sun's heat pushing it like a fiery bat. 
impossible. Of course, the moon was rising, so it was already higher than the pitcher's shoulder. The game would have to go on tomorrow morning before the sun got low enough to sit on anybody's shoulder. He'll probably sink to the some, top of some trees and sit there like a stuck balloon. The thought made him snicker. In his mind, he moved the stars around into a baseball diamond. Somewhere beyond the moon, a bat stopped the baseball with that beautiful crack. And Archie was back at the plate, feeling the force of the ball meeting the counterforce of the bat. The jolt starting in his wrist went moving along his, his arm back to where his shoulders were still swinging the bat. His whole body twisted as he threw himself against the driving force of the ball. His all-star digging for leverage in the dirt and losing it. He was lifted right off the ground and hung there an instant while his heart stood still. Like a big hand stopping the ball right there in midair. He hoped his mom didn't know about his heart stopping. The ball reversed itself. The bat busted thin air and then it came down on the top of the catcher. He scrambled up, trying to see the ball, but it was gone at where it burst into flame and become the sun. He stopped his eyes against the coruscating light, but he could still see it through a shutter, shut tight eyelids. A tiny voice asked, Is he the one? He pretended to be asleep. It was easy to do. Just breathe long and slow so his mom would think he was cocked right out like you had been hit by a foul ball. Who else? A tiny, a second tiny voice replied. There's your Archie Smith, boy wonder, all right. This voice had a different, well, range of colors to it, so we could tell it from the first voice. The first tiny voice seemed to laugh, actually, it was sort of went incandescent, like a cap sparking off under a blow one from a rock, pop and fizz. Why is he such a wonder? The second voice asked in its own crackly burst of color. His mom says so, said the first tiny voice. They laughed together, so all the colors spilled and mingled like inks in a bowl. He could see them through his eyelids, popping and fizzing and floating just over his head. It's because I always say I wonder all the time, he wanted to tell them. But his throat and tongue were numb, as when the dentist gave him a shot in his gums. What does he mean, I will say I wonder, the second voice asked. Archie thought, they can read my mind. Oh, said the first tiny voice. He says, I wonder if I should wear my Boston Red Sox t-shirt today, or I wonder if Miss Loomis will call on me to do my five times, or I wonder why regular kids have edges on their face and big starey eyes, or I wonder where baseballs go when they get slammed out of Fenway. I wonder if some lucky kid ever finds them. Sometimes when Archie was pretending to be asleep for his mom and she looked too close when she bent over to kiss him, he would start laughing. His mom would laugh too, at his attempt to fool her. That was what happened now, his throat and tongue were all of a sudden okay. But he didn't open his eyes. The more he wanted to laugh, the tighter he squeezed his eyes closed. Bottom of the ninth. The second tiny voice fizzed, and he thought he heard a crowd of tiny voices popping and sparkling and scintillating. Not very far away either, maybe just outside his bedroom window in the early, warm early summer night. Oh, said the first tiny voice, and he thought it was fizzing and popping suddenly very close to his ear, almost inside it. You should always wear your Red Sox t-shirt, it was clean. Mrs. Loomis will certainly call on you to do your five times, so you better look, work hard on them. Regular kids don't have any choice about being regular. They just are. And every single one of them thinks she looks funny, too. Secretly. And once in a while, some little lucky kid finds a ball that's been knocked out of Fenway and must the moons caught it and hurled it back, trying to tag the runner. Play ball, cried the second tiny voice. Crack. In a ripple of cracks like ice breaking on, on, on the river in spring, cheers erupt from the park. 
Sparkle was bursting into every crystal color in the universe. Opening his eyes, Archie sat up and stared out the window. Watching the moonlit streaks like shooting stars across the sky, headed for the moon, laughing on the bills of the summer trees. Slowly, one hand behind his head, he had let himself down on his pillow, looking at the shadowy ceiling over his bed. He wondered. He wondered if his mom might let him go to the park tomorrow to look in the bushes for a baseball. Maybe one of the moon dropped, trying for the tag.